Hey everyone, my name is Nicholas. Today we're going to be doing some missions with the M400 and the M350. We'll do a scan with the L2 with each drone, just see kind of how the workflow is different, some of the new features on the M400, and, and just see overall, you know, what data comes out better and, and which data is easier to collect. All right, so let's get started with the M400. I'm going to start with planning the mission for this drone along with the L2. So I've got my RC plus two, I'll just do it right on the controller. Uh, has a nice big screen, super bright as well. So even on a day like today, I can see the screen pretty easily. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead, go to my flight route library. I uh, will create a new route. Uh, we will go ahead and do an area route for today. I'm just gonna draw a polygon around the field we're at today. Another over here. Right, that polygon looks pretty good to me. Go ahead and check, click the check mark. Flying with the M400 and the L2. So of course, uh, this is something that's available with both the M400 and M350, but you have the option to select between a LiDAR mission or a photogrammetry mission. Uh, of course, the photogrammetry would utilize the RGB camera on the LiDAR. Uh, which is mostly there for colorizing your LiDAR data, but um, you can also use it for collecting photogrammetry data, which is great. Uh, return mode, we'll do a triple return today. Uh, and we do want colorization for this, so we're happy with that. Um, we'll do ortho collection. Um, altitude mode, we're gonna go with AGL. One thing we're going to test today uh, is actually a new feature with the M400, which is the real-time follow feature. So it's going to be able to use its downward sensor to pick up how high it is above the ground, um, something you would normally have to do uh, if you were using the M350. Uh, you would have to utilize a DSM file. Uh, but uh, I want to do some testing with this real-time follow. It can save us a lot of time in the long run. You know, we don't have to make our own DSMs and we don't have to download the ones from the internet, which aren't always the most accurate or reliable data. So let's go ahead and use the real-time follow feature today. Uh, we're flying a LiDAR uh, mission. I uh, want to fly pretty close to the ground just so we can get uh, some nice resolution on our data. We'll fly at 50 meters. Uh, elevation opt optimization will set to off. Uh, safe takeoff altitude. I mean, there's some trees around here. Uh, we'll set it to the same height as our mission, 50 meters. Uh, of course, it's always important to calibrate the IMU, so we'll keep that on. And I always like to fly slow with LiDAR, uh, just so I can get a nice dense point cloud. We'll fly at six meters per second today. Uh, in terms of overlap, uh, just standard 50-50 is what I like to do for any LiDAR missions, just so we make sure that we see every point twice. Uh, so we're happy with that. And that sums it up for our mission. Uh, let's spin it up today. Of course, uh, we have the uh, vision assist mode on right now, which you can see that as the drone kind of turns around and right now it's going forward, it's switched to the a front obstacle avoidance sensor, which is super nice for maneuvering the drone around. It's just doing a quick IMU calibration. So, you know, right now it's flying backwards. So we're looking through the back obstacle avoidance sensor. Um, but yeah, pretty useful there for navigating through uh, spaces uh, and, you know, avoiding obstacles. Super nice feature there. Um, but yeah, looks like our mission is underway. Let's take a look at the actual L2 here. Something that's really nice, which I really like about the L2 is you can actually see the point cloud as it's being connected in real time. So have it in uh, side by side mode. You can see the point cloud updating as the mission is underway. Uh, but you can also switch back to the FPV, you know, see where the drone's going. Uh, drone's doing all the work. I just got to wait for the mission to uh, 
finish. You can also see some statistics uh, regarding the height. So this is in regards to that real-time follow feature. You can see that the drone is, you know, looking ahead uh, in the mission and uh, noting any changes in the altitude. Uh, so yeah, you know, real-time terrain follow. Uh, doing great work right now. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, wait for this mission to finish up here. All right, so mission is almost done here. Uh, one thing that's great about the L2 is you can actually see the point cloud as it's being collected. Just looking at the mission there, uh, you know, almost done. Uh, but if we click on that model button, we can actually see the point cloud, uh, which is super cool. Um, this will actually go away after the mission is uh, completed, but you know, as you, your point cloud is being collected, you can actually see you know, the whole model uh, just before it's uh, done collecting. So that's, that's super cool. Uh, you can also see a mission quality report you know, at the end of the mission here, now that, now that the mission is over, uh, you can actually see uh, you know, your RTK status as the mission progressed. Uh, so, you know, looking at the report here, I can see that it did have a fix the whole time, which was really nice. Uh, make sure I get the uh, positional corrections. Uh, but yeah, just based on the fact, you know, I saw my point cloud as it was being connected, you know, I'm satisfied with the coverage. Uh, I checked the mission quality report. I had an RTK fix the whole entire mission. So I'm pretty confident that when I do go process the data that it will come out super nice. So let's take a look at that when we get back to the office. All right, now that we've done the mission for the M400, let's take a crack at it on the M350. So at my flight route library here, we'll create a new route. Of course, the M350 isn't gonna have all the options that the M400 has, uh, but with the L2, you know, you're pretty much always gonna be using that area route uh, for any kind of LiDAR mapping. Uh, we are just flying the M350 a bit ago. That's why there's already flight lines. Let's go ahead and draw our polygon. Get there. Another dot there. I'm gonna fly all the way over that way. Perfect, happy with that. Uh, of course, we're gonna be flying with the M350 L2. So pretty similar interface, you know, this is kind of relating to the settings uh, of the uh, L2 and not the actual drone. We'll do a triple return just as we did with the uh, M400. So we're happy with that. Uh, we do wanna do terrain following, but of course M350, you know, it doesn't have that real time feature, which really, really nice on the M400. It really saved us a lot of time and seemed to be very accurate just with how you know, kind of eased itself up as it went up that hill just on the other side of our site there. Uh, but we're, for the M350, we're gonna go ahead and download the DSM file from the internet. Uh, one thing about these DSM files is, you know, they are from the internet, can't always be the most reliable. Uh, so it's important to check and make sure that it is accurate before you take off. Real-time following is just such a nice feature. But I'm gonna do the same uh, height. We're gonna do 50 meters for this mission. Um, we're gonna turn off elevation optimization. Same thing, we're gonna use all the same parameters as we did with the M400, so six meters per second. Uh, and then advanced settings, of course, we'll do 50-50 overlap. Um, yeah, we're happy with that. And that's pretty much it for my mission. So, I mean, on the M350, it's saying that this mission will take around nine minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, I believe on the M400, it's set around eight minutes. So, you know, we're only scanning here about 4.6 hectares. Uh, so, I mean, it's not too big of a site, but you know, the, that time saving will, will really exponentially grow if you're, you're flying a, a bigger site. And when you combine that with the extended battery life on the M400, you know, just shows how much time you can save with that platform. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy with this mission, so let's go ahead and uh, rev up the drone. Uh, 
Uh, so our M350 is up in the air flying the mission. Of course, it's following the terrain using the uh, DSM file. Uh, you know, it's not as smooth as the real-time follow on the M400, but you know, it does get the job done. Uh, so we're happy with it, but just quickly take a peek at some of the differences between what we can actually see while the mission is going. So of course, you know, this is kind of a feature on the L2 and not the drone, but you know, we can see that we got the side-by-side -side view, real-time point cloud. Um, of course, we can change uh, the color palette, look at RGB. You know, this is all things you can do with M400 as well. Uh, one thing we don't see is that super nice uh, real-time follow heads-up display that you see on the M400. So just flying the mission with the M350, you know, one thing that was on the M400 was that vision assist mode, you know. Being able to see through those obstacle avoidance sensors based on the direction that you're flying in. So, you know, again, super useful for flying through, you know, areas with obstacles that are present. You know, just give you that added confidence. Oh, am I gonna run into something when I fly this direction? Of course, not available on the M350. I'm looking through the FPV camera right now and, you know, the options which I can do are pretty limited. All I can really see is the discrete mode. We're also gonna be able to do the same thing, you know, see our point cloud as it's being connect collected. Uh, so yeah, I mean, model's looking uh, like it's coming together there. So I'm happy with that. And yeah, let's uh, let the mission run its course here, see how it turns out. All right, so we've just flown the same mission using the L2 on both the M400 and the M350. Uh, we took a look at some of the differences, new features on the M400 and, you know, why it is slightly improved over the M350 when it comes to collecting data with the L2. Uh, so next step, we're going to go process the data, uh, but that'll wrap it up for this video today. In our next video, we will take a look at that data and look at, you know, did the data on the M400 come out any better? Well, you'll find out in that next video, so be on the lookout for it. Thanks for watching guys and make sure to subscribe.